You know, we hear about so many things. 5G may be the biggest thing that I hear about most often. What, what, what do you really take away from what you saw at CES? What happens with 5G? Well, I think it's pretty clear to say that 2019 is going to be the year of 5G. This is going to be the first year people will actually be able to buy devices and jump onto 5G networks, which will have really big ramifications for the way we use our devices and the way these devices talk to each other. The thing about 5G at CES is that it still feels like it's a lot of talk. There are lots of demonstrations. We saw Hans Vestberg, Verizon's CEO, sort of talk about his vision. And we've had other companies sort of elaborate on how things will work. But we don't have a great sense of how these things kind of pan out in more concrete ways. Let's also talk about TV screens, about that being a big deal. We saw in the piece uh, these foldable screens, but when you get to the smaller screen, to, to devices, what, what's really the latest and greatest there? The biggest surprise that we saw at CES was a company called Royal, this company that, frankly, very few people have ever heard of. They're a Chinese, ah, there it is. They're a Chinese manufacturer of foldable OLED displays. They've been doing this for about six years, and yeah, they've done what Samsung has so far not been able to put on the market yet. Does it yet. really work and not have a crease that winds up staying in it? Have you used one of these things over time? Uh, so I have used one of these things, not over time, unfortunately. Yeah. Some of the units that we did see, they've clearly been in use for a little while. They're maybe not the most polished devices, but I mean, it's a flexible screen. That's and the cool. ability to fold out and use the phone as a tablet is frankly really powerful. Uh, you know, people are more and more focused on health and fitness. What, what type of gadgets did you see or, or things that might really play into that trend? We've got this here. This is the second generation Muse headset. What is that? Let's see. Yeah, pop this thing on. So basically, it's a, it's a tiny consumer grade EEG. So it reads your brain waves. How it's supposed to work is it measures your brain activity and guides you through meditation. So <laughs> as you you're sort of working through these guided meditations, you'll hear a lot of rain when it's sort of messy really? like, inside oh. your head. And as you sort of empty your and wait, mind. It knows when I'm messy inside my head, when it, my mind is cluttered? It definitely tries to, and it does get pretty close. Muse Seriously? <laughs> this is more than just like a mood ring? It's absolutely. I, I need to play around with this more, but that sounds interesting. What's this thing? It looks like glasses. So this is the light by a Chinese startup called Enreal. They've raised about $15 million so far, and that's mostly because they've been able to take the technology that makes some really impressive AR devices like the Microsoft HoloLens and the Magic Leap and converted it down into this form factor that... Can I see anything yeah. there? So it'll... The, some of the visuals won't work here since it is sort of a pre-production unit. Oh, yeah. But you will get Ow, a display popping up there. And it's one of the few augmented reality headsets you can sort of get and start messing around with now. With something like the Magic Leap, you're less able to sort of use that out in the real world. You uh -huh. can feasibly use something like this on the subway. It's, it's definitely getting to. smaller. It's definitely getting smaller. Um, what about this thing? This is just a razor, but it's a high-tech razor? This, this was one of the bigger surprises at CES, just based off of the level of people who really seemed into it. So this is the heated razor from Gillette Labs. Gillette Labs being Gillette's sort of design-focused venture. Uh, it kind of does exactly what the label says, right? It's a heated razor that's meant to sort of replicate the experience of getting a hot towel wet shave huh. at a barbershop. So I expect to see this thing do really well around Father's Day. Uh, I have not tried it yet, but the colleagues of mine who have tried it kind really of vouch like for how comfortable this thing is. Yeah. All right. The last thing I would expect from a consumer electronics show is a burger. But <laughs> here we are with a burger. What is high tech about this? So this is the basically this is the Impossible Burger 2.0. I, I cannot speak to why they decided to show this off at CES. It does seem kind of out of the realm of, of what's appropriate there. But they did actually pour a lot of work into refining their original formula into a burger, a completely meatless burger that actually tastes like a burger. Did they grow this? I mean, they, they, what is the meat? If it's not meat, is it soy or is it something else? So the original it. Impossible Burger used mm -hmm. wheat protein. And it tasted pretty good, but it, yeah. it kind of didn't give you the same sort of mouthfeel that a traditional burger would. So they've rejiggered the formula, right? This is based on soy protein. Wow, that's so really you, good. You actually get a bit more of the experience of eating meat. Plus, I think the flavor has kind of been upgraded as well. We had a, a crate of White Castle Impossible Burgers. way better than White Castle. Right? This is better than a slider. This is really good. <laughs> I could, I'm not a vegetarian, but I could eat this fine and not really ever Me think too, about it. I would it. never miss it. <laughs> wow, I'm taking another bite. It's good. Oh, wait, I better wait till after the break. Anyway, thank you so much for coming in. Of Great course. Great stuff. I love it, especially the burger.